Hey everyone, this is Hydra Head, and this is Barrier by Brian K. Vaughn, Marcos Martin, and Monza Vicente. Vicente. So, um, this is by Image. I got this because the owner of my comic store highly recommended it. He had one, two, three, and I think even four all set out in the new comic area trying to uh, pimp it out to everybody. <clears throat> he recommended it, I picked it up, and then he told me that uh, I should be forewarned, it will randomly switch to Spanish. But the pictures are good enough that you'll understand what's going on. And that's true. It doesn't change the fact that it absolutely pissed me off when it went to Spanish. Um, and I, uh, honestly, this whole story just, just annoyed the fuck out of me. Um, but, literally, the last page, um, there was a large <laughs> fucking U-turn in the story, and it actually made me want to read number two. So, um, while I don't think this was good, and I really didn't enjoy it. I do plan on reading number two because, uh, yeah, the, the plot twist was impressive. So, touche, Brian K. Vaughn. I was mad, talking mad smack to my friends, and then I got to that last page and was like, oh, okay, I guess I am reading number two. So, good job, mate. Uh, first problem, though. <clears throat> and, and sorry if you guys hear some noise in the background. There is a one of the jail work crews behind me. Um, it looked like they were having lunch, but I guess they're cleaning up weeds uh, anyway the first thing um, that I don't like is that it reads like a calendar I think that's annoying um, we're basically starting off in Texas uh, this is supposed to be fairly modern times we got our uh, Mexican driving the F-150 he finds a horse with a with all of its skin removed. Not even a horse, just the horse's head. He's talking about it like it's the whole horse, though, and it can't be wolves because they left all this meat. I mean, it's literally just a head. There's not, quote-unquote, all this meat. Um, he thinks it was a chupacabra. The person he's talking to, his boss, uh, is not impressed with his opinion. Turns out his boss is this chick here. She's a uh, typical blonde redneck. She's She's crude, but uh, but she's PC on the inside, going by her dialect. Her name is Liddy, and she's not attractive. She's from far Texas. And, uh... So this whole book is about illegals, basically. And there are, um... This little bit right here... It's because the cartels are basically saying, hey, we're going to use your property for running um, running immigrants across the border. Um, there's really nothing you can do about it. We then jump down to Mexico. We switch to Spanish. And we get introduced to all these people that are going to be getting taken across the border. Um, we see that drug cartels are, in fact, bad dudes. Of course, there is a tranny who wants to go the evil, evil cartel henchman um, is fucking with him slash her. Uh, I don't know if he's, like, wanting to rough her up or fuck her up or sex her up or what, but there's some dispute. She kicks him in the balls. He pulls a gun on her, and then that's when our main guy comes in. Dejela and Paz. Oscar from San Pedro Sula, Honduras. So he's South American. Of course, he sticks up for the tranny um, and ends up just giving him a bunch of money to not fuck with him. Uh, and then they get on the bus, and the tranny is kind of talkative. And um, apparently, it doesn't look like they're going where they thought they were going. So we're led to believe, I believe, that this is actually a um, fake coyote. They're just collecting money, and they're going to dump him off. We then move back to the farm where Lydia is talking to the sheriff, trying to get help. 
Uh, this is basically where they're pointing out that the American government does nothing for the people who are affected by the immigration crisis. Um, cops are bad. Government's bad. Um, everything's left to your own hands. We then jump back to the illegals who are being basically taken over by some other bad guys. That's when Oscar and his trans friend jump out, um, flee. Oscar jumps into the river to escape. The trans, I think, gets caught because she doesn't want to jump into the river and escape. Exciting, I know. I know. So then we go back to Liddy, who is now at Kate's bar. Kate is one of her friends. Kate also lives in the South. Kate is also a drug addict and wants Liddy to be a drug addict with her. Liddy used to, but doesn't anymore. Oscar uh, managed to kind of escape, and then he sees a train with a whole bunch of illegals waving the American flag, even though they don't actually like America. And uh, he goes running to get on the train with everybody else. As we can see here, immigrants are mostly women and children. <clears throat> uh, as he's running to hop on his illegal transport, he realizes he forgot this little book. We don't know anything about this book. We just know it's important. He runs back and he gets it, and he gets on the train. All is well, fam. Uh, so while Liddy was talking to Kate about the cops not being willing to help her, Kate suggested she go to a private security person, ex-military. Um, she's like, army and marines or whatever. Doesn't know. Okay. So now we meet the, uh, the vet. This is him. He's an alcoholic, as we can tell. Apparently he's also way into the south and taxidermy, so I think this is supposed to lead us to believe that he is an ignorant redneck. Uh, you'll notice he has a fireplace, all wood interior, very large house, right? Carpet, big space, lots of space. They're drinking booze. Um, they very much make him a racist, sexist, violent piece of shit. Um, this was really, really fucking triggering me that the blonde hair, blue eyed, white guy, ex military is the low life piece of shit in this story. Go fucking figure, right? So, of course, um, she gets tired of his shit and leaves, doesn't gonna hire him. And that's when we find out he lives in a single wide fucking mobile home. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not what the inside of a single wide mobile home looks like. It is really, really annoying when you're gonna trash fucking poor people and you don't even take the time to look at what the inside of a fucking mobile unit looks like. I absolutely hate this ideological fucking bullshit that they're trying to push all the goddamn time. Anyway, we get this stupid fucking setup of this duel scene between Liddy and Oscar. They're clearly suggesting that these two are going to meet, and they're very similar, even though they're super different. Um, oh, we also get to see Liddy looking at porn because she's a blonde country girl. She is clearly into black dudes on white women. Um, I don't know what this helps with the story. Okay, she likes drinking and watching porn before bed. She's lonely and sad. It must suck to be a farmer. Am I right, guys? Bunch of fucking cocksuckers. As, uh, as she's jerk... Oh, well... As she's rubbing the bean and getting drunk, we see Oscar still trying to break into America, man. He ends up falling in a hole in her yard. <laughs> Sorry about this. This is a stupid fucking calendar setup. All right, so he falls into a hole in her yard. She goes out there. He calls her a puta. She's going to kill him. And then that's when crazy shit happens. So I figured this was just going to turn into like a love interest. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um... By this point, I was pretty freaking heated and triggered by this story. And, uh, okay. So this is where the story can entirely change my mind and maybe want to read number two. If you're not planning on reading this, then continue to watch. If, um, if you do think you might want to check this out and give it a shot, then go ahead and turn it off now because I'm about to ruin the biggest twist in the story. So you got five, four... Three, two, one. We're about to ruin this story, fam. <laughs> so there's this like weird whiteness and they start floating and the gun drop and then it pans out and there's this giant fucking spaceship blasting that hole where Oscar was. And then it turns into this. And this is the end. <laughs> 
So yeah, I absolutely want to know what's going on in the second one because that's a huge, huge, huge cliffhanger. And while this story upset me, pissed me off, and uh, I thought it was absolute garbage, um, that twist is going to make me spend another five fucking dollars on number two just to see what happens. Personally, though, I don't recommend it. Um, if it looks like something you're going to be into, though, then by all means, get it. Um, I do like a lot of Brian K. Vaughn stuff. I just really didn't like this. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Hell Hydra, baby. <laughs>